know, that's been a blessing as we're going through uh, just a study on, uh, on the armor of God. And you know, just the reality of, of all that, that we are in today in Christ, that truly we're engaged in a spiritual battle. You know, what we're doing, it, it matters for eternity. You know, as, as, as we are being the body of Christ and the things that we are doing in the spirit, in the things of God, they're going to last forever, you know. And so uh, we need to take heart to that. You know, we, we can't lose sight of that, that truth. And, and so I'm gonna, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Ephesians chapter 6 from verses uh, 17 all the way to 19. So let's just read these, these verses here and, and let just the Lord just continue to minister to our hearts. It says, And take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. You know, when we look at all of the, all of the equipment that is needed, you know, for this spiritual battle, uh, they all protect vital organs in the human body. Amen. And we recognize that the things in which we were looking at to are vital even the spiritual realm in what we are protecting as we look at the helmet. You know, the helmet, what does it protect? Does it protect the vital part of the body? Most definitely, amen. Without, the, without your head, you're done. You know what I mean? You'll, and, and we recognize too that this is where our mind is at. You know, we recognize it as a place of reasoning, is a place of knowledge, is a place of intellect. Amen. That we have. And also this is an instrument that is used for the kingdom of God. Amen. And, and the reality is whatever you allow here will eventually be deposited in here. So we need to really understand too that the enemy is trying to get a hold of our mind. He's trying to get a hold of our thoughts. He's trying to get a hold of what we believe, amen, that begins first here in the intellect and the reasoning, amen. And so it's very important that we put on this helmet of salvation. In the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.8, it uses it, it adds a little bit more to that. It says, as a helmet, the hope of salvation. When we think about hope, uh, it, it's something that we look in, in a distance. It's something that you, we have already are assured of and have placed our faith in now that we have believed what God has promised us of that which is to come. And so I have this helmet on. It is the knowledge of God's blessing, God's future for my life. And, and you know, what, what does the enemy want to do? He wants to rob you from that. He wants to rob you from that hope of everlasting life with Christ. He wants to rob you from the truth that God has already laid upon your heart about His kingdom and, and, and Him. Amen? And so this is, this is important for us that we are called to put on the, the, the helmet of salvation. We, got, we have to guard our minds from the attacks of the enemy. What do we need to do? As the scripture says, we need to renew our minds constantly. And how do we do it? We conform our way of thinking to what the Word of God says. We have to conform our lives to what the Scripture says. And this is the great change that happens when people commit their lives over to Jesus Christ. Amen. God begins that work of renewing their mind. Taking their thoughts away or taking away what they once believed and conforming it to what the Scripture says. And we need to have the helmet of salvation because we need to guard everything that God has provided for us. All the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the truth, that hope of the future that is found in Him. Amen? We need to guard that which regards the gospel and the eternal kingdom of God. And here's one thing about hope too. You can't live without it. Amen? We need hope. And I'll tell you one thing, the enemy, man, he's trying to rob that from you. If he could take hope from you, man, he could take your life. If you have nothing, no more to look forward to, then you have no reason to, to live. Especially in regards to the things of the kingdom of God. So we cannot allow the enemy in that. We recognize too that the, the mind is, uh, is one of the greatest battlefields in the life of the believer, man. That's where the enemy many times tries to engage because he wants to rob us. He wants us to begin to reason the scriptures. Amen. He, he wants us to begin to doubt what the word of God says so he can take our hope, so he can take our joy, so he can uh, rob us. Amen. From God's the salvation, from his great joy. Amen. 
So put on the helmet of salvation. It is the, it is the truth. It is the gospel that we have received from the Lord in which we must be renewed in the spirit of mind daily. And we do it by the word of God and by the spirit of truth. The next thing is the sword of the spirit. Amen. Can you imagine going into war without your sword? That'd be pretty foolish, man. You can have everything else on, but you don't got a sword on you. You know, you're going to be one of the easy pickings in that battle. All right. And you can say you have all the faith and everything, but if you don't, if you don't have the word of God, if you're not studying God's word, if you're not allowing the word of God to change you into the image of Christ from glory to glory, listen, man, the enemy has, is going to be able to get a, a foothold upon you. The Bible says that the word of God is like a sword, a double-edged sword, sharper than a double-edged sword. And it pierces to the most deepest parts of the hearts of men. And see, you know, we use the word of God not only to defeat the powers of darkness as Christ did when he was, when he went into the wilderness in the time of temptation. If you remember that, how did Jesus defend himself? He defended himself by saying it is written. So it is in the word of God. When we proclaim God's word, that's where victory comes. But it's not only to fight against the powers of darkness, but it is an instrument that is used to pierce the hearts of men with the gospel truth that they would turn from their sins and turn to Christ and be saved. Amen. That is that message of the gospel of peace. Amen. Men being at enemies or hostility towards God can be made right, stand and have peace with God. And it's the sword of the Spirit. Not only do we engage it in, in battle against the powers of darkness, but it is also an instrument that is used to take people from captivity into, into the kingdom of God, into life. And that's what we are doing. We are engaged in spiritual warfare today. Amen? And I want to tell you something, man. We cannot think or consider that the enemy is a weak foe. He's not. He's a deceiver. Man, what do you think has brought all this destruction upon the earth? It began in the Garden of Eden. He caused Eve to doubt the Word of God. And it went downhill from there. He is a deceiver. He's a conniver. We cannot at all put our trust in Him. Amen? Amen. He, he is seeking not only to kill, steal, and destroy. And consider too in heaven how He was able to deceive and bring down with Him a third part of the angels. He's, he's a deceiver. And the only truth that can defeat him is the word of God. It is the spirit of truth. Amen. And we need to understand that. We recognize also what the word of God is for us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 15 and 16. It says, and, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise to salvation through faith uh, which is in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Everything that we need, it is found in the living and powerful Word of God which is the sword of the Spirit which is for you and I. We need it. We need God's Word in our lives. You know, Pastor Rick preaching on the righteousness of Christ, and we can absolutely do nothing, anything good apart from Jesus Christ. But that must be something that is evident in the life of every believer. Everyone who is engaged in a spiritual battle, righteousness comes from their lives through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see that that's what the Word of God, it brings instruction for right living, right standards before God. Amen. And so we see this. We need the helmet of salvation. We need the sword of the Spirit. Amen. Which is the Word of God. But then we need prayer. It says praying always. You see, when we engage into this spiritual battle, we know, as Pastor Sunday was preaching from the very beginning, our strength comes from the Lord. So we're going to go in battle. We got the full armor of God. How are we going to be infused with strength and authority and might and courage? It's going to happen on our knees. Because this battle cannot be won in our own ability, in our own strength, in our own wits about doing things. It's got to come through God's power. And that's what prayer is all about. Amen. Prayer is faith. Prayer is dependence upon God. Prayer removes you and puts God there. Amen. Puts Him in the battle with you. 
And He is the one that gives you and I victory. Amen. Prayer is an instrument of dependence upon God. And it is one of the most powerful weapons against the powers of darkness. How many can say amen? amen. Hallelujah. It's a spiritual work. Prayer is a spiritual work in the kingdom of God. You ever find it that it's hard to pray? Is it hard to pray, you guys? Come on. We got prayer at 5.30. We can't even make it out, you know? I'll just put that in there, you know. <laughs> but apart from that, every day I struggle with prayer. It's, it's a spiritual battle, man. It's not easy just to go in there and just get on my knees and begin to pray for 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour each and every day. It's hard. Because it's a spiritual battle, that's why. That's why it's difficult to get in there and to begin to seek the Lord. Amen? Because why? What does it do? It takes you out of the picture and by faith we are believing uh, for God's will and power to be displayed. That's what's happening when we get on our knees and we begin to pray. It's a spiritual battle. We're saying, I'm not going to try to do this in my own wisdom, in my own strength, but I'm going to rely on the power of God. I'm going to rely on Him going before me and strengthen me for that work. Amen? Hallelujah. And then it says also there in supplication in the Spirit. You know, this is a work of the Spirit in the life of the Christian. When you pray, it is the spiritual work of God in you through the Spirit. It's getting God's will done and not yours. Have you guys ever thought about that one? Prayer is spiritual, you guys. Prayer is, is a spiritual weapon in the kingdom of God. And we can have everything else, but if we leave our prayer, I don't know why that clone turned on, but we still got three minutes. <laughs> it says supplication in the Spirit. It is the work of the Spirit that accomplishes God's will through prayer. Another thing it says here, it says to be watchful to the end. Prayer brings about in us a spiritual alertness. A spiritual alertness, man. When we, you guys know the way it is, man. We stop praying. Man, we just, things are just sliding right by us, man. There is no spiritual awakening in our lives. But when we are on our knees and we are seeking the Lord, we, begin, we, we are more aware of the powers of darkness and the kingdom of light. We are more aware of the voice of God, amen, and the will of God. So prayer, amen, it's, it's, it's also, it's a way to be watchful. Remember Jesus being in the Garden of Gethsemane? And He was praying and saying, you know, He was coming to the place where He was going to go to the cross. And then He told the disciples, watch. Watch and pray. So, so watching is a part of prayer. And, and, and so it's mixed together. When we are in prayer, we, we're going to be spiritually alert. And I don't know about you, man, but we, we need to be spiritually alert where we're engaging in the spiritual battle against the enemy. Because I, I can assure you for sure, in our own wisdom, in our own strength, there is absolutely no way that you can win this battle. And in prayer, we are become more spiritually alert. We're more in tune with Christ, man, and He's able to work out a war uh, through us for His glory and give us victory. Do we understand that? Man, may the Lord just help us to, to engage more in prayer. You know, I was mentioning with Pastor Sonny this morning too. It's something that, you know, that, that I read there and never really popped up to me. But the Lord told the disciples, pray at least you enter into temptation. Prayer delivers us from temptation. Not only from the temptation of sins, but also from the temptation of being disobedient to God. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is the means by which, we, by which the will of God is carried out. Prayer is what will, will give us strength because we're connected to God. And He's going to help us to overcome this flesh in our own way of wanting to do things and say, Lord, Your will be done, not mine. We need to put on the full armor of God. And it says, till the end, till what? Till everything is, is accomplished. So everything is brought to its fulfillment. And it also speaks about perseverance. Prayer is hard. It's not easy. Amen. I'm going to turn this thing off because it's going to sound already. 
Prayer is not easy. And so in prayer, we have to press in. Amen. Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane is, is, is one of the greatest examples of that. He prayed. Amen. And it was an a, a easy prayer. The Bible says that even great drops of blood fell from him like sweat. He was in great agony. The Bible says their prayer must be a prayer of perseverance, man. Many times, and I say it for myself, I get on my knees and I just want a quick little one minute prayer just to, you know, get the day started off. And there's not that pressing in. But there, there should be prayer. We should persevere. Daniel persevered and God brought revelation to him and to God's people. And it was a blessing for them. May the Lord help us to understand the importance of prayer, amen, in, in this, in the, in the full armor of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Paul says, pray for me that I might be able to, to utter the words of God, that I may be able to clearly communicate the gospel, the mysterious gospel of Jesus Christ. Prayer affects and influences the lives of others. Praying for your kids, know that God is, is involved there. You pray for your husband, you pray for your wife, it's not in vain. We pray for one another and we need prayer. You guys, we need to be praying for one another because God works in that way. God uses prayer for His glory to get about His will accomplished and we need prayer. Amen. We see all the instruments of, of put on the full, full armor of God. Just understand, that when we come to the place of prayer, it's a place of dependence and self-denial and a trusting in Almighty God.